I feed my dogs and cats raw, and I'm going to show you how to do the same. The reason why we decided to go raw is because we learned the incredible benefits for their health, and we realized what the ingredients looked like on even some of the most expensive dog brand kibble. For example, if you see the ingredient chicken byproduct, that could very well mean dead or diseased chicken carcasses that are left over from chicken farms that they just ground up and become a chicken byproduct. Kibble is often filled with synthetic vitamins, like with humans, are not easily absorbed. And raw meat is what dogs have evolved eating on an ancestral diet based on their canine evolution. And in this house, we are trying to align ourselves with as much of our ancestral living as possible because that's what evolved us successfully for so long. Feeding raw can be very intimidating, so I'm gonna break down how to do it. But before I do, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more health and homestead content. All right, let's dive in. The only material you're gonna to need to get familiar with is a kitchen scale. And I'm gonna show you how I use mine. Maybe you know how to use a kitchen scale, but when I got started feeding raw, I didn't. The very first step to understanding how to feed raw is to calculate how much food to give your pets. So let's do some pet math. I'm gonna give you two examples of how to calculate how much to feed your dog and it's all based on weight. So the first dog weighs 100 pounds and you always wanna go by their adult weight. So you'll do this even if they're puppies. The only difference is if they're a puppy, you're gonna feed three meals a day versus two meals a day, which you can start doing once they are one year old. Our second dog we're gonna do will be 70 pounds. So the general rule of thumb is that you want to feed two to three percent of its body weight. So if I'm going to take 100 and multiply that by let's just say 2.02 .02, that's going to give me two pounds or 32 ounces. There's 16 ounces in a pound. For this dog, it's gonna be 0 0.02 times 100, which is going to be 1.4 pounds or 22.4 ounces. Now I'm feeding them two meals a day so I'm gonna divide this number by two, which is gonna give me 16 ounces that I'll feed in the AM and the PM. Same here, I'm gonna divide this number by two, and that's gonna give me 11.1 .1 ounces, so I'm just gonna round it to 11 ounces AM and PM. So twice a day I'm feeding my 100 pound dog 16 ounces, twice a day I'm feeding my 70 pound dog 11 ounces. That is step one. We've got one more step to give them a complete nutritional diet. The perfect breakdown for what you feed your animals should be 80% protein, 10% offal. Offal can include anything like liver, brain, heart, basically any organ. And then the other 10% is going to be bone, which we don't always do. There's a couple of ways to go about bone and we'll talk about this in here in a minute. So oftentimes I'm just looking at the protein and the offal and then there's so many ways that you can mix up their meal. So now let's do the second calculation to figure out what is going to consist of that 16 ounces. So 
16 times 0.8 is going to be 12.8 in protein. 16 times 0.1 is going to be about 1.6 in offal. Now, since we don't do bone in every meal, I'm going to skip that. And what I like to do is just pay attention to this number, these numbers here, and I'm going to give them the amount of offal they need, the amount of organs they need, and then I'm going to add it up to 16 when I'm putting them on the scale. So same thing over here. I'm going to do 11 times 0.8 and that's gonna give me nine ounces of protein, 11 times 0.1, and that's gonna give me basically one ounce. So again, I'm gonna first do the offal, whoops, and then I'm gonna add up to their total number of ounces that they need to to have a complete meal. Now let's take a look at how we put this into practice. Bowl goes onto the scale. I turn it on. I've got some beef in here. I've also got some uh, liver, beef liver in here, and I'm gonna cut it up to put in here. So I remember that I'm gonna start with my offal, my organs, and I'm going for 1.6. So I'm gonna cut up some chunks until I get to 1.6. Once I reach that number on the scale, and it's okay if it's not exact, I'm going to add some chunks of beef to get to 16 ounces. I also happen to have in the fridge some turkey, so I'm gonna give them some of that. And then I think I'm gonna mix up his protein today and give him a cracked egg. And that is about perfectly 16 ounces. You can do so much more than just this. And there's plenty of different meats and combinations that you can do. So let's talk about that. But before we do, let's address this whole bone topic because there's many ways to go about incorporating bone. Bone is important in a raw diet because it supplies calcium and phosphorus. But there's different ways to go about giving bone. I happen to have a bunch of bone that is dehydrated and powdered from when I've made broth. So I'll do a little sprinkle of that sometimes, maybe a couple times a week. This is some turkey bone meal. And I'll just do a little sprinkle of that. But other ways of incorporating, incorporating bones is literally just picking up some bones that are raw from the grocery and giving them to your dog to chew on a couple of times a week. In terms of what bones you can get, uh, dogs are able to digest bone, that if, they're, if they are swallowing the bone, they can digest bone. They have the pH and the acidity in their stomach in order to break that down. But there's the concern about choking. So when it comes to which bones are edible, which means what you would put in the bowl, you wanna choose soft bones like poultry. A great bone to start with is a chicken neck or a turkey neck. Rabbit bones are also very soft. Usually what we do is we'll pick up a couple of bone marrow bones or any bones that have a little bit of meat attached to it from the grocery and we'll give it to our dogs outside as a treat for two to three times a week. And those are decent sized bones that they're not gonna be able to swallow. So when you're picking out bones for chewing, you obviously want to find bones that are too big for the dog to actually swallow so they don't pose a choking problem. But you have to choose raw always, otherwise you risk the chance of the bone splintering once they've been digested. And so there's many different ways to go about bone and that's usually how we go about it. The other thing that I really like about 
feeding raw is that you can be your pet's own homeopathic doctor by recognizing their needs. For example, when we deworm our animals every month, we deworm everything, everybody, every animal, everything has parasites, so it's always a good idea to deworm. And we'll sprinkle some anti-parasitic powders. I'll link all of this below for what we use. And we'll sprinkle that in their food. Um, for flea control, we use garlic. We usually only do that in the warmer months and now it's getting cold, so we don't have to do that. But you're gonna read a lot online about how, and probably hear from your local vet that garlic is terrible and toxic for your dogs. But it turns out the studies that suggested that used copious amounts that would be toxic even for humans. And so for flea control, we use one clove of garlic crushed for our large dogs once a day. And for our cats, we use half a clove. And then as soon as it starts getting into the cooler months, we start transitioning off of that and then there's no fleas present and we don't worry about fleas. Dogs are carnivores, so they really only need meat and protein. That's what they would eat in the wild. But occasionally you can add things like berries, which they would nibble on for a little treat. You could add carrots, which help with digestive cleansing, specifically the kidneys. One of my favorite supplements to add to our pet's food is broth or raw milk. Broth is one of nature's best gut healers. This one's so jiggly, I think I need a spoon. And so if you have a dog that has any autoimmune issues, broth is gonna be your dog's best friend. Because autoimmunity is often linked to the gut since 70% of our immune system is in the gut. Let me show you how beautiful this bowl looks. Our dog is gonna be so excited for this meal. A couple other things to consider before you get started on a raw diet. You need to fast your animal for 24 hours in order to adjust the pH of their stomach from, pH, from kibble to raw food. The easiest way that we've found to do this is to feed your animals breakfast and then wait 24 hours until you feed them breakfast again. And remember, there are so many ways to go about feeding raw. I will put a bunch of links down in the caption below to give you some support groups if you have any questions or if you're interested in resources, they make pre-mixed blends if that's an easy way for you to get started. Those just happen to be very expensive. And if you're on a budget, then the best thing you can do is just straight up ground beef. Ground beef is usually some of the cheapest meats on the market chicken as well, but a lot of dogs have allergies to chicken, so I wouldn't start off with chicken. Turkey, beef, pork, lamb, and fish are all great protein sources for your animals, both cats and dogs. Of course, it's the cost of feeding raw that had us think about getting meat rabbits, and it's the reason why we raise meat rabbits. But meat rabbits are also really low in fat, so we have to supplement with ground beef and some different protein sources occasionally. So I know it can be overwhelming, but just know that the easiest way you can get started is with the math that we showed you at the beginning and just straight up ground beef. And even if you start out with just that, it's still going to be so much better for them than kibble. I've read some really amazing stories and accounts of how feeding raw has changed their dogs' lives, how dogs that have been diagnosed with cancer have been cured by feeding raw. And it makes a lot of sense because we are what we eat and what we eat is what fuels our body and heals our body. So it only makes sense that by feeding our bodies what they're intended and designed to eat, we're going to naturally thrive. We found as soon as we started transitioning our animals to raw, that especially with our cats that had been fed kibble their whole lives, one is 12 and one is five, 
the 12 year old cat's coat became instantly thicker and shinier and she had a little bump on her head that she had had for years that disappeared. And that happened after a few weeks of being on a raw diet. I hope you found this video useful and informative and helpful in getting you started on transitioning your pets to a raw diet. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below in the comments and make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for more health and homesteading content. All right, Boone, you excited? Good boy, come here. Good dog. Bon appetit, Boone.